this is the third episode of Fan Special. If you still haven't watched last two episodes yet, I recommend you to watch them. Let's go to the 60th film of the Calles du Cinema list. <laughs> Number 60 is The Dead. The Dead is an adaptation of James Joyce's short story of the same name, which is the final tale in his collection, Dubliners. The film is notable for being John Huston's last directorial effort before his death. It explores themes of memory, love and the passage of time during a festive gathering in Dublin on January 6, 1904. The story revolves around Gabriel Conroy and his wife Greta. The film beautifully captures the nuances of Joyce's writing weaving a tapestry of emotions and cultural reflections against the backdrop of a traditional Irish celebration. Right. Do you want to go into the dancing first or do you want to have a refreshment? Dancing, please. To warm us up. That's be sure after your cold rise. Number 59. La Dolce Vita, directed by Federico Fellini, is a classic Italian film that has left an indelible mark on the world of cinema. The title translates to The Sweet Life in English and the movie is a social commentary on the decadence, superficiality and moral vacuum of post-war Italian society. The film follows Marcello Rubini, a journalist played by Marcello Mastroianni, over a span of seven days and nights as he navigates through the glamorous and hedonistic world of Rome's elite. Number 58. The 400 Blows is a landmark French film directed by François Truffaut. This movie is the debut feature of the French New Wave movement. The title The 400 Blows refers to the French idiom Faire les 400 coupes, which means to raise hell or engage in mischief. The film follows the story of Antoine Duanel, a 12-year-old boy growing up in Paris. Antoine struggles with a troubled home life and faces difficulties in school, leading him to engage in a series of rebellious acts. Number 57. Seven Samurai, directed by Akira Kurosawa, is a masterful Japanese film that has not only become a cinematic classic but also one of the most influential works in the world of cinema. Set in 16th century feudal Japan, the film combines elements of samurai action, human drama, and social commentary to create an epic and timeless tale. The story revolves around a small farming village that is plagued by bandit raids. Desperate to defend themselves, the villagers decide to hire samurai warriors to protect them. I'm doing it, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Number 56. Laura, directed by Otto Preminger, is a classic film noir that has left an enduring legacy in the history of cinema. Renowned for its sophisticated narrative, memorable characters, and atmospheric cinematography, Laura remains a quintessential example of the film noir genre. The film revolves around the mysterious murder of the beautiful and enigmatic Laura Hunt. The narrative unfolds through the perspective of detective Mark McPherson, who is tasked with investigating the crime. You follow her, I'm gonna tail him. 
Number 55 King Kong directed by Marianne C. Cooper and Ernest B. Schoetzak is a groundbreaking and iconic film released in 1933 that forever changed the landscape of cinema. This adventure fantasy masterpiece is widely considered a pioneering work in the monster movie genre setting new standards for special effects and storytelling. King Kong is renowned for its groundbreaking use of stop-motion animation by special effects pioneer Willis O'Brien who brought Kong to life through frame-by-frame -frame animation. Number 54 Gertrude, directed by the Danish filmmaker Carl Theodor Dreyer, is a contemplative and stylistically austere film that delves into the complexities of love, passion, and personal sacrifice. This final work by Dreyer, one of cinema's master directors, is often regarded as a meditative and challenging exploration of existential themes. The film centers around around the character Gertrude Conning, a woman in her 40s who decides to leave her husband Gustav Conning and pursue a life true to her ideals of love. Number 53 Some Came Running directed by Vincent Minnelli is a dramatic film that explores the complexities of post-war American life and the challenges faced by individuals seeking acceptance in a society marked by societal expectations and personal conflicts. Based on the novel by James Jones, the film follows the character Dave Hirsch played by Frank Sinatra, a writer with a troubled past who returns to his small hometown after World War II. As he grapples with his own inner demons, he becomes entangled in the lives of those around him. Well, I truly love you, don't you know that? Number 52 Some Like It Hot, directed by legendary Billy Wilder, is a classic screwball comedy that has earned a reputation as one of the greatest films in the genre. Renowned for its witty humor, clever plot twists, and stellar performances, the story begins in 1929 Chicago, following two musicians, Joe and Jerry, who witness the St. Valentine's Day massacre and find the themselves on the run from the mob. Marilyn Monroe's portrayal of Sugar Cane is one of her most iconic roles. Her magnetic presence on screen, combined with her comedic timing and musical performances, elevates the character and contributes to the film's enduring appeal. What kind of a girl do you think I am, Mr. Fielding? Oh, please, please, it won't happen again. I'll say, please, come back. Number 51 Beauty and the Beast is a poetic and visually stunning French film directed by Jean Cactu. This cinematic adaptation of the classic fairy tale is renowned for its enchanting atmosphere, evocative visuals, and innovative use of practical effects. Cactu's Beauty and the Beast transports audiences into a fantastical world where the line between reality and imagination blurs. The the film opens with a magical prologue inviting viewers to suspend disbelief and embrace the dreamlike narrative. Number 50 Amar Court, directed by the iconic Italian filmmaker Federico Fellini, is a nostalgic and vivid exploration of small town life in Italy during the 1930s. The title Amar Court is a Romanian phrase that translates to I remember in English, reflecting the film's autobiographical nature and its emphasis on memories and personal experiences. Set in the fiction 
fictional town of Borgo, the film captures a series of loosely connected episodes over the course of a year, showcasing the daily lives, rituals, and eccentric characters that populate the community. Fellini's approach is characterized by a dreamlike and fantastical quality, blurring the lines between reality and imagination. Number 49. The Story of a Cheat, directed by Sasha Quitri, is a charming and clever French comedy that stands out for its innovative narrative structure and satirical take on the art of deception. Sasha Guitry, who also stars in the film, brings his wit and charisma to the lead role, creating a delightful cinematic experience. The film begins with the protagonist identified as the cheat played by Guitry being apprehended by the police for his numerous fraudulent activities. <laughs> Number 48. Pierrot Le Fou, directed by Jean-Luc Cotard, is a groundbreaking and visually arresting French New Wave film that stands as a bold exploration of love, identity, and existentialism. This surreal and poetic masterpiece is celebrated for its innovative narrative, striking visuals, and the dynamic chemistry between its two leads. The film follows Ferdinand, played by Jean-Paul Belmondo, who adapts the alias Pierrot and his ex-lover Marianne Renoir, played by Anna Karina. Tired of his bourgeois existence, Pierrot decides to abandon his life and run away with Marianne. Alors embrassons-nous. Number 47. La Jeté, directed by Chris Marker, is an experimental short film that has left an enduring impact on cinematic storytelling. As a landmark work in the science fiction genre, La Jeté is known for its unique narrative structure, use of still images, and its exploration of memory, time, and human experience. The film unfolds primarily through a series of black and white photographs accompanied by a hand voice-over narration. Set in a post-apocalyptic Paris, the story revolves around a man who is subjected to time travel experiments as scientists seek to find a solution to the grim future they face. Number 46. Eight and a Half, directed by Federico Fellini, is a cinematic masterpiece that stands as a defining work in the history of international cinema. This Italian film is a bold and introspective exploration of the creative process, self-discovery, and the blurred lines between reality and imagination. At the heart of Eight and a Half is Guido Anselmi, portrayed by legendary Marcello Mastroianni a renowned film director who finds himself creatively and emotionally paralyzed while trying to make his next film. Juggling the demands of producers, the expectations of his cast and crew, and grappling with the complexities of his personal life. The Crowd, directed by King Vidor, is a silent film that stands as a poignant exploration of urban life, societal expectations, and the individual's struggle for identity within the vastness of the modern city. Widely regarded as a classic of American cinema, The Crowd is celebrated for its innovative storytelling, emotional depth, and social commentary. The film follows the life of John Sims from his optimistic youth to the challenges and disappointments of adulthood. Number 
Number 44. Fanny and Alexander is a Swedish film that is often considered one of Ingmar Bergman's masterpieces. This story is a rich and intricate exploration of family, childhood, and the interplay between reality and fantasy. Set in Uppsala, Sweden, at the beginning of the 20th century, the film unfolds through the eyes of two siblings, Fanny and Alexander Ekdal. Their lives are initially idyllic, surrounded by a loving and theatrical family. Number 43 2001 A Space Odyssey, directed by Stanley Kubrick, is a cinematic masterpiece that stands as a landmark in science fiction and filmmaking as a whole. The film is a visionary exploration of human evolution, artificial intelligence, and the mysteries of the cosmos. The film is divided into four acts, each presenting a distinct stage in the evolution of humanity. It begins with the dawn of man as a tribe of hominids discovers the use of tools after encountering a mysterious monolith. Hello, Hal, do you read me? Number 42. The Wind, directed by Viktor Sjostrom, is a silent film that stands as a haunting and atmospheric exploration of the harsh realities of life in the American West. It is a notable entry in the silent film era, offering a compelling narrative enriched by atmospheric cinematography and powerful performances. The Wind explores themes of isolation, madness, and the psychological toll of of harsh environments. And the film number 41 on the Kaya's Do Cinema list and the latest film in this episode of Fenafilm is Touch of Evil directed by Orson Welles. It is a film noir classic that has become renowned for its innovative cinematography, complex narrative and gripping performances. The movie is often cited as one of the last great examples of the film noir genre and a testament to Welles' directorial brilliance. The story is set in a fictionalized Mexican border town and begins with a memorable long take tracking shot considered one of the most iconic in cinematic history. He was tailing you? Yeah. <laughs> Why would I be following a cop? He's an idiot. Maybe. <laughs>